Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to have a look at the excellent auto animate library or utility is probably a better term for it. Uh, and you know what? Before we get started, just a quick note. It's really good. Uh, I've been programming for, for a while now. And actually, it turns out that to come across uh, frameworks or packages or things like that that are just effortless, turns out it's actually pretty rare. Most things require... Um, some arm wrestling to get to work, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, auto animate is one of those tools where you import it and then, whoa, it just worked instantly, which is such a fun feeling. All right, so I'd like to share it with you today. Let's get started. All right, so if you're working along, visit auto-animate.formkit.com. And yeah, for a quick example, imagine you're building some kind of to-do app or something like this, and you need to add an item. We've all done this a million times. But yeah, once you import auto animate, you get these transitions or animations for free. So notice if I want to go up, yeah, stuff like this actually turns out to be very tricky to implement on your own. And what's so cool about auto animate is Again, it just works. You know, I always laugh when people say drop it in because it's never quite so simple. Uh, in this case, it actually is that simple. Okay, so we're going to try this out with Vue. And of course, I need some kind of example project. So here's what we're going to do. Now, we could pull in Laravel, but I don't know. Why don't we keep it a little more lightweight and widespread? So with that in mind, I'm going to create a new Vite project. All right, the project name, I don't know. We'll just call it Play. All right, I'm going to use view, and TypeScript is fine. We're not going to really make any significant use of it, but it's fine. And then we can run these three commands here. So I'll paste that in. Awesome. So we have installed our dependencies, and we've booted up our server. Next, let's open this in our editor. So if I open up the source directory, we have our entry point where we create our application and we mount it to the element with an ID of app, which you can see right here. All right, so now if we have a look at our app component, yeah, it's, it's a typical view or Vite splash page. Let's have a look in the browser. So I'm gonna switch back to the terminal and I can command click here. All right, we have our project, awesome. Okay, so now why don't we get rid of everything here and we're going to build up our first example so why don't we call this example one because we might have a few all right cool so let's go ahead and do that now i'll create a new view component example one it'll use the composition api and i'll just say hello there from example one all right cool so let's come back here and let's see if i can import it at the top yes i can so we import it, and then let's get rid of all of this junk here. And once again, have a look in the browser. So we come back, and sure enough, we are importing it. Okay, great. So now, just to get our feet wet, why don't we uh, animate a series of divs or blocks or something like that? Okay, so let's go in here, and hmm, maybe we'll have some numbers. So I'd like to create an array of like 100 numbers or something like that. Now, if we were using PHP, I could do something like this, which is really cool. But yeah, in JavaScript, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but is the easiest way to do something like this. Uh, create an array consisting of 100 items, and then we'll map over it uh, the value and the index, and I'll just return uh, the index there. Uh, that should give me an array of numbers between uh, 0 and 100. Okay, so now what I could do here is I could say v4 number in numbers. Uh, let's go ahead and set the key equal to the number and then the text equal to the number as well. And let's have a look in the browser. And yeah, sure enough, we have a long list where each number is wrapped or contained within its own div. All right, so now let's do a little bit of CSS. Uh, we could do it here, but you know what? I want to go a little quickly. So why don't we just pull in Tailwind through a CDN, and that way I can instantly start using some of those utility classes. Again, just to save ourselves some time. All right, so now on the section itself, why don't we set a display of flex, and then we will wrap them if they need to. And then for each individual div, let's set a background color of like gray 200. Yeah, uh, let's set a gap. Mm-hmm. And then why don't we set a width of 12 and a height of 12? Yeah. And then we will 
uh, set a display of flex on each div and then perfectly center the number on the page. So I will set uh, align items to center and justify content to center. All right, and that looks good. Okay, so now imagine that it comes down from management that we need to offer a shuffle button, you know, because, because reasons. It's just for fun, okay? We're going to add a shuffle button right down here, and when you click it, we will shuffle all of the numbers within the array. So maybe 30 would be up here, and 0 will be down here. But of course, here's the kicker. Uh, when we shuffle it, we want to re-render the DOM, and then we also want to add uh, an automatic animation using this little utility here. So let's see if we can make that work. All right, so back to our editor. Why don't we add a function here and we'll call it shuffle. And then, well, actually, because I want these numbers to be responsive and reactive, let's go ahead and import ref from view. And then I can wrap it like so. And yeah, then I can say, if I reformat, I can say numbers.sort. And yeah, why don't we use the most common sorting algorithm, which would be 0 0.5 minus math.random. I'm sure you've done this many times. Okay, so now why don't we do this uh, right down here at the bottom. We'll add a little button that says shuffle. Uh, we'll give it a background color of black, make it rounded, text white. That's fine. And then finally, the div will be fixed in the bottom uh, or mostly the bottom right corner. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, there we go. We have our little shuffle button. Looks good. So now we can come back and on the button, I can say, when you click on me, shuffle the numbers. Okay, so that will hit this function. Now we can't forget numbers is uh, a ref. So I need to actually use numbers.value.sort. That will sort the numbers and then it should automatically re-render them in the DOM. All right, so I click on it. Yeah, there we go. Perfect shuffling. But it's not clear w which item is going where. So this is where we pull in auto animate. All right, so let's come down to installation. And yeah, using NPM, I will install this. All right, and next, let's come down to view. And uh, there's actually a number of ways that we can do this. So actually, let's come back to usage. And we can see, first up, we can just import it within the component that requires it. So import auto animate. We listen for when the component is mounted, and then we call that function, and we pass it the wrapping, uh, the, the, the parent of the elements that we want to animate. So in this case, notice they're passing in dropdown. Dropdown is the parent, which means all of the direct children within dropdown uh, will receive automatic animation. That's the way it works. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's swipe some of this right here. I will paste it in. And then I can say, uh, let's do it right down here. On mounted, so once the view component is mounted, I want to call this auto animate function. So now I want a reference to the parent of all of these boxes. So I will use view refs. I'll just call it container. And then what I can do is say, let container equal uh, an empty ref. And magically, that will point to the corresponding uh, DOM elements. Okay, so now I can say container.value. And yeah, I think I think that's everything. All right, let's give it a shot. We come back, and yeah, you're not going to believe it. It just works. So in our project, I hit shuffle, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, pretty crazy. All of that happens for free. It kind of blows my mind how actually drop-in uh, this tool is, which is really fun. All right, and of course we can append to it, so anything else you might want to do, like um, what if instead of shuffling it, you want to add to it, add, and in this case we'll have some kind of function, or let's just do it inline. I could say numbers.push, and what's our last number here, 90, 99? We're going to push 100 to the end of the list. Okay, so the way auto animate works is it will um, animate whether you update a DOM node or transition it or, or prepend or append or remove items uh, from the tree. So if I come back, now if I hit add, notice it slides in nicely as you see here. Why don't we do the opposite instead? Why don't we put a new item to the top of the list? So in that case, I can come back and say numbers.push or numbers.unshift. Okay, so now we're gonna see more 
um, more specific reordering because everything will have to adjust. So I hit add and there you go. It makes room for the new item as you see there. One more time, add, so cool. And again, you get all of this for free. So you get the magic of view for free and all that reactivity that goes along with it. And then when you pull in auto animate, you get these instant uh, transitions or animations again for free. It's pretty amazing. All right, um, why don't we review? I think we have time for one more example and then I think you have the general idea. Let's copy this and name it example two. And this time we'll kind of do that typical to do app uh, just to give you a slightly more real world example. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's get rid of all of this, even the on mounted call, because in this second example, we're gonna leverage a view directive to make it even easier. I'll show you. We'll add a section once again. This will be our to do's. We'll have a wrapper for the to-dos. And yeah, why don't we go ahead and create some. Let to-dos equals uh, a ref. This will be an array where, you know, you, again, you've done this 10 bazillion times where each item in the to-do has like a, a body. Go to the store. Uh, is it completed? No. And then each to-do should have uh, some kind of ID. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so now, magic of screencasting, I'm gonna create a handful more and one, two, whoop, and there we go. Now we have four items here. Okay, so next within our container here, uh, why don't we loop over them for to-do and to-dos. Let's make sure we set a key. And actually on this note, whenever you're working with animation or transition libraries like this, it is paramount that you apply this unique key. That is the identifier so that it knows which item you're referring to. And it's not enough that it's not enough to just add like an index. Like if you've ever done something like this to do index, and then you set the key to index. You don't want to do that. Make sure it's some kind of unique identifier. Uh, and if you don't have one, if you don't have an ID from the database, then generate a unique ID that you can apply to it. Okay, so let's bring this back. And in this case, I can use to do.id. And then, uh, why don't we do this? Um, just for some quick styling, we'll do a p tag. This will be the body of the to do. And then we'll have a form, and this will be our checkbox. So we'll say checked if to do dot completed. Okay, so let's update our root component to be example two, and then have a look in the browser. There we go. All right, so not very pretty. We need to add a little bit of styling. Uh, let's see if I can do it super quick so I don't bore you too much. Right here, once again, the magic of Flexbox, and this time let's do justify between, and that will create uh, equal space between the items, which will effectively uh, push the checkbox all the way to the right and the label all the way to the left. Finally, we can add just a little bit of gap in between, maybe a little bit more, and you get the idea. Okay, next, why don't we add some background colors? So once again, gray of 200, yep. A little margin bottom, a little bit of padding, uh, maybe too much, PX3, PY2, make it rounded, yep. And then on the parent itself, yeah, you get the idea. I'm not gonna make you watch too much, but a general to-do layout, again, something you've done over and over and over, probably for every tool you've ever learned, including auto animate, it turns out. Okay, so now we're gonna add a little text area here at the bottom. And actually with that in mind, let's get rid of the form and we'll put it, how about right uh, here. So this will be our form that consists of a text area. I'm gonna give it a border. And then for the rows, uh, it's too much, maybe four rows. Yeah, just something like you see there. Okay, so we're going to type something out, then we will submit it. And I can say right here, when you submit this, why don't we add to do? All right, right up here, function add to do. And it seems like the only thing we need to track here is what the to do value is. So let's say uh, new to do, let new to do equals a ref. And then I can say right up here, to do's dot push a new object uh, ID. I'm just gonna hard code for now, but we could we could figure it out dynamically 
Actually, why don't we do that? Uh, to do's dot length plus one. The body will be new to do dot value. And then of course, completed will be false. Okay. So yeah, does that look okay to you? Uh, we have a text area. You have to fill something out in order to submit it. And when you hit this submit button, that will hit the submit event. We then call add to do. Add to do will push a new object onto the to do's array. That will then, of course, uh, reevaluate using view. And notice at this point, we haven't yet pulled in auto animate. So if we give it a shot, finish something, submit, it uh, got too cocky. It doesn't work. I can't even make a basic to do app as it turns out. Uh, to do's, oh yeah, of course. Have we not all made this exact mistake 10 million times? I know there's actually tools now that will do it for you, but it seems like in my editor, that's not the case. Okay, I'm pretty sure that fixes it. So anyways, finish up that thing, submit, and there we go. Now we can see a new item here. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up by clearing out this text area and then pulling in, once again, the auto animate directive this time to to seamlessly uh, display that maybe we could adjust it we could reorder it whatever you want to do uh, behind the scenes okay so after we add a new item let's say new to do dot value is reset and that will clear uh, the text area when we're done and yeah now check this out we're going to come into view and you can see there's a dedicated view auto animate directive that we can use. And all we have to do, as it turns out, is to pull it in and then register it as a plugin. So I'm gonna grab this right here and let's come into our entry point. Yeah, right here. Let's pull it in and then I can say, use auto animate plugin. And I believe that's all we need to do here. Okay, so check this out. Uh, once again, in our browser, we can add items, but we have no uh, transitioning at the moment. Okay, so back to example two. And once again, let's find the parents. So here is our list of divs. Here is the parent. So I will add V auto animate. So notice with this approach, we don't have to um, pull in the utility. We don't have to listen for when the component has mounted and then call auto animate. We don't have to register a, a reference. All of that is done auto magically uh, behind the scenes. So one more time, give it a refresh, finish up that important thing and pay close attention. If I submit now, it comes in nice, nice and shiny, pretty cool. And yet again, just for fun, if we wanna add a second um, shuffle button, because everything needs to be shuffled as it turns out, shuffle. Uh, in this case, it's fun to shuffle because of the, the animation. It, it's, it's, it's a much prettier effect, uh, which is why you see it demonstrated so many times. But yeah, in this case, uh, let's make it clear, it's just a standard button. And when you click on it, we will shuffle to do's, and then we will wrap up for the day. Function, shuffle to do's. And yeah, we're basically going to do the exact same thing that we did before. To do's dot value dot sort, and then we will uh, once again do zero point five minus math dot random. All right, is that it? Shuffle to do's. Yeah, that should work. All right, so let's hit shuffle a few times. Shuffle. So cool. Now again, you got to be careful. This is going to be something people run into all the time. If you are not applying a key, because you know, sometimes you might be able to get away with it, or, or sometimes you think you got away with it when it's just waiting to bite you. But either way, if you try to shuffle this, notice, yeah, it doesn't work at all in this case, because it's losing that identifier, it needs to know what is what. So make sure if I bring this back, uh, yeah, right here, that you're applying that unique identifier uh, for the record. And now your shuffling will work exactly the way you expect. So finish up the video tutorial, submit, and then I can shuffle it all I want. Yeah, so cool. And it truly is a drop-in utility of the highest order. Give it a shot.